Hello! Today I am here to wrap up the first half of my August reading for you. I did take part in the Booktubeathon at the start of this month um, and I've done a separate video of the books that I read during that. I'm not going to talk about them here because I have already spoken about them in depth. So if you want to know about those books I will link those down below. So I've also read four books here so I'm pretty happy with my progress so far in terms of August and how August is going. In fact my reading thanks to the Booktubeathon has tipped me very close towards my yearly goal which is fantastic. So anyway let's get straight into this. First non-booktubeathon book I read this month was on my Kindle. Um, I won't hold this up because it, it's tatty and coming apart. That was The Wolves of Willoughby Chase by Joan Aiken. Um, I kind of heard about Joan Aiken, I think I saw Neil Gaiman tweet about her or something, um, and The Wolves of Willoughby Chase was a book that interested me. I have to say I think if I had researched more about this book it might not have been one I had picked up. Um, so this is a story basically about two little girls. Um, they are cousins. One of them lives in a house with her parents. The other is an orphan who is currently living with an aunt. And the orphan moves in with her cousin um, because her aunt can no longer afford to feed her. And there is also a new mistress on the scene because the cousin's parents are going away to recuperate. Her mother is not very well. Um, this basically, the best way I can describe it is to say that it is like an old fashioned version of Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events. Sadly, I hate the series of unfortunate events. Okay, hate is a strong word, but I think because I read them as an adult, rather than enjoying them as a child, I really couldn't get along with them. I found them just cliched a little bit unbelievable in the worst kind of way in terms of I didn't even feel that the characters' actions were believable in the scope of the story. Um, I just did not enjoy it um, and I found kind of the same thing with this book however this book was written in the 60s um, I think 1964 was its release date I didn't realize that going into it so there are quite a lot of old-fashioned ways of speaking and it's quite an old-fashioned children's tale um, which I think knowing the date um, makes a lot more sense but sadly I think it was just a bad match for me I didn't really enjoy it I found the situation quite unbelievable um, and just the reactions of the characters weren't fantastic for me um, there was still enjoyment in it I think it was a nice enough children's book I don't know that I would rush to read this Joan Aiken though, which is strange because I think this is one of her most famous stories, um, but yeah, it was not for me sadly. I think if you enjoyed the series Unfortunate Events, give this a go, it's kind of, obviously it came a lot before and I wouldn't be surprised if that series is kind of based off of books like this. Um, so it's kind of nice as a source material, but yeah, generally it was not for me sadly. Then I read Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. I wanted to something easy um I've just been craving easy reads recently and something cozy and comforting I'm starting to feel the weather's changing and I'm starting to feel quite autumnal and I always find that these books are quite good for autumn and winter time um I'm not going to go into this too much because I think everybody knows what Harry Potter is about by now young boy it turns out he's a wizard this is the sixth I think in the series it's difficult when I speak about Harry Potter because I do not hold these books in as high esteem as other people. I think they're fantastic cosy reads and there are certain things like the trip to Hogwarts and the Christmas and the feast in the hall and things like that that are really lovely and fun and they do give you the warm fuzzy feelings. Generally what I like best about these books is the fact that I think they deal with big topics in quite a fantastic way for children. Um, so the way that things like depression and, and general darkness in the world are handled I think is really effective and I really enjoy that. Um, otherwise I have to say there are things that I don't love about this series. I don't like Harry Potter as a character, I think he's quite underdeveloped. Um, I also find that the romances in here are just out of place, I don't think they need to be there. Um, and also I would say that the length is just far too long, I mean this is a middle grade book and it's a middle grade series and I think especially towards the end of the series I feel like because people were such fans of it and they wanted more and they wanted bigger books um, perhaps some editing kind of got missed out because I think this book though obviously the whole thing about Hogwarts and them going to their lessons and stuff that is what makes these books so cosy but I always feel as though we could do with a lot less of it because when you break it down the actual action in Harry Potter books usually only happens in the last 50 pages. That said, I, I, I quite enjoyed it. It was okay. I got a bit bored um, during the reading process. As I say, 
sadly they just don't have the same appeal to me that they do to a lot of people but they are good go-to's if you want something that just feels like a warm blanket um then i read my non-booktube book for the month which is the infernal desire machines of dr hoffman by angela carter i will link my non-booktube review of this one down below um needless to say i really enjoyed this i gave it four stars and i will definitely be searching for more angela carter from now on um plot wise it wasn't fantastic for me um this looks at a world in which basically the world has gone to war and it's this man called dr hoffman who is basically challenging reality he is shifting reality he's changing everything that people think they know with this machine of his um and the government are kind of fighting against him and trying to keep reality in order um and obviously as dr hoffman comes to power things get pretty crazy um so following this book is not the easiest thing but i just found it fantastic i love angela carter's writing and i really like the fact that she's not afraid to go to these really crazy places um, and try and make it work. I think that's so admirable and I would highly recommend this one and other Angela Carters. Then I finished the half of the month with Elmet by Fiona Mosley, which was shortlisted for the Man Booker and I'm pretty sure it was shortlisted for the Bailey's Prize. Um, I might be wrong in that, but I think it was. I got help from the library. Now, I've seen it in my library a few times and I do want to read it, but I've been holding off because I felt as though it was going to be a book that I really enjoyed. Um, I am glad I got it out from the library. It was not a book that I really enjoyed. I think the trouble is, this is her debut novel, so to be shortlisted for the Man Booker with your debut novel is like the dream. I'm sure as an author that just feels fantastic. The trouble is, actually, when you break it down, I think the issue with having your debut shortlisted for such a prestigious prize is that it kind of sets up expectation and this is a, a perfectly fine debut but it is a debut and there are issues and i think because of the pure love that seems to surround this book and because of the nominations that it's received i was expecting a lot and i didn't really get it so this looks at a boy called daniel who lives a very isolated life with his father who he calls daddy and his sister kathy um it's not ever really discussed why but they've kind of withdrawn from society, they've built this like cabin in the woods, the kids don't go to school, they go to like lessons with a family friend um, and they hunt their own food and they're very isolated from society. Um, that was my first issue, it's never really explained why they live that way and I think it would have been more believable and better if we had some kind of motivation behind why they lived the way they lived. Um, also, I generally just felt like this was quite a bland book. Um, it, Ultimately, it just left me absolutely underwhelmed. I kind of felt like nothing really happened. It, it, it almost reads like a outline for a novel that doesn't really actually come to anything. Um, and I feel as though that probably is typical of a lot of debuts. But as I say, because this one had such weight put on its shoulders, it kind of falls down a little bit flatter, um, which is not fair. And I understand that. And it's difficult to kind of separate expectation from reality. But that is what I found. Um, ultimately, the plot line follows the fact that the man who owns the land they've built their cabin on, Mr. Price, um, basically wants their dad to work for him because their dad is quite a violent fighter um, and he sort of has done work for this man in the past where he has intimidated people who owed him money and it basically looks predominantly at the idea of land ownership and the fact that having a name on a piece of paper does that mean that you own that land um, it also looks in quite an interesting way and I think this is the part of the book that I preferred it looks at issues of gender um, so obviously these children are growing up outside of society um, and they are therefore completely stripped of gender roles so Kathy is definitely the boy she's the violent one she's the protector um she goes out and does the hunting whereas Daniel stays home and does the cooking and he's quite effeminate and people comment on how pretty he is and obviously he's got long hair because he hasn't been in society to realize that you should cut it um I think also another issue with this was for me the um speech uh it's it's based in Yorkshire and I feel like Fiona Mosley was trying to bring that Yorkshire dialect into her speech but she did it very intermittently and I actually don't think that when it was done it was done very well. Um, I was kind of having to ignore that fact because if you spoke the accent in your head it, it didn't quite, the, the, the way that it was written it didn't quite fit um, and there were lots of words missed out and stuff and I understand that was her attempt to get that twang um, 
but it just didn't really work for me and another pernickety thing is that Daniel is 14 slash 15 in this novel I think he's 15 when it ends um and he read like somebody much younger which I suppose in a way works because he's not been in society so he is kind of much more underdeveloped than perhaps children of his age at school would be but also on the cover and I know this isn't Fiona Mosley's fault on the cover there is a really young boy who must be about five um so going into it I kind of had this picture of Daniel being much younger than he was um and also I found because of the very nature of this isolated book um you didn't really get any feel for what timeline it was set in I'm assuming it was the modern day in which case there are problems in this for me I think there are plot holes that perhaps have been glossed over for instance if it is in the modern day and this father has taken his children out of school why is the law not getting involved um because they're not officially being taught at home they're not following any kind of curriculum um literally they're just going to a family friend and she's talking about whatever she fancies talking about to them that day um so why aren't the police getting involved with that also just generally how is this working I just there were some things that I think really needed attention I think it's it's a good base for a novel I think it could have done with a lot of work but as I say that's kind of the nature of a lot of debuts and I think Fiona Mosley is definitely someone to look out for she put me quite in mind of Steinbeck um there was kind of a Steinbeck-esque bleakness and and atmospheric feeling to this novel that I really liked but generally it just fell flat for me I feel like it was a book that didn't really know what it wanted to be so it, it kind of brushed over these various issues but it didn't really have an overall theme or plot I suppose but generally theme I think you can get away without plot as long as you know what you're trying to say with your book and I don't feel like Fiona Mosley fully did know that um so yeah I was disappointed I know it's been compared to things like Cancel and Gretel um which was kind of what appealed me to it in the first place I wouldn't say I got that at all other than the fact that it is a brother and sister and they are living in the woods um yeah it, it just fell really flat as I say I will look out for Fiona Mosley but yeah this was not the one for me sadly so it sounds like I've had a quite negative reading month I haven't really it's been good um I feel like I've been reading a lot and I've got a passion back in me for reading so yeah things are on the up I promise <laughs> so let me know down below what you've been reading this month and I will see you next time bye